Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Exciting show today, guys. I got one of my childhood tennis heroes, Bay Area local tennis icon, Peanut Louie Harper with me today. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so welcome Peanut Louie Harper to Tennis Spin. Thank you for having me. Oh, no, I feel <laughs> so privileged. Um, I've actually wanted to sit down and talk to you for a long, long time. Um, unfortunately, I didn't think you'd say yes, and, and, uh, but I'm, I'm so happy to have you here. Um, just so you guys know, Peanut probably doesn't know this either. Um, I grew up in San Francisco, um, real close to Chinatown, and I've always heard the name, oh, Peanut did this. Peanut went to Wimbledon. And I'm like, who is this person? <laughs> <laughs> and it, cause it, it is like, she, she's so good. Have you seen her strokes? And all? I'm like, okay, I gotta find out who this person is. <laughs> so I actually saw you in Golden Gate Park. I, I was probably a little kid and, and I was like, oh my God, she is good. You know, then, then I hear about your career. I mean, it's, you know, the, the, the web wasn't the, wasn't an existent back then. So the web was basically people in the tennis community telling each other, like who did what and how and when and how far somebody got, um, or reading the newspaper, which I didn't do very much. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, Pina, you are a uh, childhood um, legend icon. Um, I looked up to you as oh, a child. Oh, well, I'm very so, honored. Yes. You guys are like family, so I'm, I'm uh, glad you asked me. Of course I no, would have said yes. thank you. <laughs> I did say yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, growing up, I want to say there weren't any um, tennis people on television uh, or in the news that kind of looked like myself. So the Asian American spirit back then, you know, kind of lives on with you, right? Oh, well, you know, well, for me, I was fortunate to have my sister, Marcy, she's seven years older, um, to follow her steps, which was great for me. And it made it easy. There's Ann Kiyomura, um, my other sister, Cece, you know, my older sister, Marisa, my brother. So, you know, and they were growing up at Golden Gate Park. They were, you know, it's so diverse. Um, but there are a lot of, you know, great, um, you know, tennis players of all nationalities. But, you know, for me, probably lucky to have my sister pave the way. And I just um, like, okay, I'm just going to do just like her. Got it. Got it. Oh, it's always great to have a sibling um, kind of following in their footsteps. Mm -hmm. So I unfortunately am an only child, so I have to look up to people like yourself. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> all right. So five questions for Peanut Louie Harper. Okay. We'll start with your name. How did you get the name Peanut? Well, my dad gave me the name Peanut because I'm the youngest of five. And at the time when I was little, I was very small. Um, not small anymore, but since I've lived here in San Francisco my whole life and everybody, you know, my same friends, you know, from when I was little to now, uh, know me as Peanut. So it's stuck. Oh, so Peanut means the youngest? Youngest and smallest. I see. Yes. I've had other people say, oh, my cat's name is Peanut. <laughs> so I haven't met very other many other little kids named Peanut, but right. a lot of animals. But Peanut is very iconic because when somebody says Peanut, at least in the San Francisco Bay Area in the tennis community, there's only one. <laughs> Unless I call someone and they say my name's Peanut, the guys go, Tina. And I go, oh, yeah, right. Tina. <laughs> Tina's close. <laughs> That's great. So, so growing up as the youngest of five, um, how did you become the best of the five? Well, I don't, you know, I don't want to say best because my sister Marcy, you know, she was probably back in the day, the rankings were different. It wasn't mm. like the WTA pro rankings. And she was, I think, top 10, you know, in the country. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, just easy to follow Marcy and she kind of had, a tougher road when, you know, the prize money wasn't, you know, that much and she's having to take buses to tournaments and things like that. And, you know, so by the time, you know, I got to watch her and all her fellow 
pro players, all the original nine and, oh. um, you know, just all those legends and just being able to see what the life on the tour is like when she played. Um, it just made it easy. You know, I was like, okay, I just play a few pro tournaments too. And, you know, Marcy, you know, my first U.S. Open, you know, she just like, okay, Peanut, we get on the subway, we go to the tournament, we stop at the deli, we get lunch, you know, so I didn't really have to think of anything on my own and just, you know, whatever Marcy told me to do, I did. Oh, no way. So Marcy actually was on tour too. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Top junior, um, top pro, um, you know, she had a great career. Injuries, unfortunately, she stopped early. Um, but yeah, definitely made it easy to have an older sister on the tour to follow. Wow. That's so, I mean, I grew up pretty much in a sheltered Asian Chinese family, you know, we, too. <laughs> <laughs> we never ventured out, never allowed to venture out. <laughs> I'm, I wasn't very traveled. Um, so San Jose or something like that would be as far as I go. So you pretty much saw the world with Marcy then. How, how did that feel? I mean, it must have been exciting, adventurous. Yeah, you know, did well, you like it? You know, us being parents of young kids, I mean, you worry so much, you know, your kids like out in the world these days mm -hmm, and, you know, just mm -hmm. to keep them safe. But back then, you're like, we barely, what, had a phone, telephone, every now and then you put coins in the <laughs> top. Oh my and, God, I totally forgot about those. And I remember going, you know, to, you know, England playing, you know, junior woman in my first year so far. And I think just like maybe calling my mom once, so, hey, I got here. And they'd be like, right. okay, you know, so we didn't have the worry then. Um, and then, you know, playing, you know, in, um, Paris and Italy and playing the juniors first, um, or some of the um, junior trips like Australia, um, or just within the country, you know, is, is, was really fun. But we we're always with other juniors, so it, you always felt safe. And it was just, you know, you're so sheltered in a, in a tournament setting, so it wasn't ever, you know, any worries. And you just practice, you do your routine, practice, hotel, play your match, and then do it again. Wow, that's awesome. So in a foreign land, did the moment ever, like, did you understand that you were in Roland Garros or, or uh, Wimbledon? Yeah, did you understand that as a, as a child? No, no I wish, <laughs> thinking back now, um, you, you wish you appreciated it more, but it was almost like, you know, even it's kind of a, when you kid, you know, talk with your former pro friends and stuff, you wish you enjoyed where you were playing more because you just didn't have time or you didn't feel you could go out and sightsee because your opponents aren't doing that either, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone, you know, you're, you're pretty tunnel vision. You're just like got your blinders on and, and you just, you know, hotel to court and back. It's not a very exciting, glamorous life like people think. Oh. <laughs> but, you know, that's you were there what for it business. takes. That's what it takes. <laughs> and, um, yeah, oh. unfortunately, didn't enjoy those beautiful cities as much as I wish I would have. Oh, got it. Got it. You had to work, guys. You had to work. <laughs> so where's your favorite place to play? I would say Wimbledon. Wimbledon. Yes. Wimbledon, the, the tradition, um, tea time, um, just the history of it. You just feel it. The whole country stops for Wimbledon. And, um, you know, here in the United States, you know, we have some fun tournaments and great cities, too. But we have so much going on everywhere. Right. Um, but, you know, that tournament dedicated for the whole country all their eyes are only on that tournament for the for the two weeks and it's super fun it feels very special oh wow how was the grass though i've never played on grass so. okay so i played so long ago that they didn't have the the shoes with the the little pebbles and the, the oh, spikes right um, we used to just go boom slide bam oh. <laughs> so when they invented those what? grass court shoes, <laughs> yeah. it was like, oh my gosh, we're at these Oh, no thing. way. So you slid around the grass. You slid and, oh, grass is not soft to fall on. <laughs> and why is it's, everybody diving on them? Boom. Uh, yeah, they're, they're brave <laughs> these days, but um, it wasn't slipping. It wasn't sliding on it by design. It was just like, phew. Oh, <laughs> wow. Slippery grass. Slippery grass. Wow. I slipped on grass before. It ain't ha uh, it, it didn't make hard. me happy. It hurt my back. So, all right. So just backstory a little bit. Um, Peanuts singles record, 238, 238 wins versus 263 losses. Uh -oh. She owns four. <laughs> hey, that's a better than 500. Oh, no. It's a slightly under 500 record. That's okay. That's okay. She owns four singles titles, five doubles titles. Now, the game 
from back then to now has you know evolved. Uh, obviously, the rackets have changed. Um, it became a little more physical. It's a lot faster. Um, what do you think of all this? Oh my gosh! I mean, just it's a whole different game, and the fitness, and just entourages, and you have you know physical um, trainers traveling with you. It's like we could barely afford to take ourselves, you know. So I can't even imagine, you know, maybe a few of the special terms you'd have a family member or you know uh, my sisters come with me or something like that, but. You know, I always tell people like Martina Navratilova in, in, in my era, she changed the game. And, you know, Chris Everett, we all modeled to, you know, be like Chris Everett right. or two hand, you know, for, for different reasons, you know, both were just, were so important to in, in my career, like people that I, you know, looked up to. And, um, Martina just for fitness though, I, I almost feel like it would be one of those things. If Martina Navratilova didn't come along and just, you know, really introduce what real fitness was to the pro game, what would it have been like? Like, I don't know if we'd be right here where we are today um, because no one did the off-court stuff like that and weights and, you know, really spent as much time on fitness until she kind of, you know, like, oh, geez, if we all don't start doing some kind of fitness. Everyone's going to be left behind because she was just, um, you know, so strong. Then Chrissy mm -hmm. started, you know, getting... Um, you know, working harder on the fitness and everything, just, to, you know, that's why they had such a great rivalry. But, you know, to me, M Martina really changed the face of the game with the fitness. Wow, so Martina was kind of like Tiger Woods. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just the things that she would do, you would never think like, oh gosh, I gotta do that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it was either that or get left behind with the, you know, by the game. So, you know, it was, it was a great, great change. So uh, just to fill you in on back when um, Peanut was a pro, they didn't get paid like we do today. It, it, it's a lot of people actually had to get other jobs. Uh, I know a lot of bartenders back then that basically worked all night and then went to play a tournament. I mean, you didn't get paid a whole lot. Even if you won, you did it for the love of the game. Yeah. So. Yep. It's like Marcy when her era and then the girls that came before her too. Really, it is that big love for the game. And by the time I came around, you know, the money was better. So you could, as long as you, you know, did okay on the tour, you could afford to keep going and, and you know, uh, pay for all your expenses right. and things like that. But, you know, when you hear what the first round prize money is in these Grand Slam tournaments, oh, you're know, like, okay, that's what we made the whole year. Okay. Um, but you know, it's a trade too, because like, even though they get paid, you know, so much money today and, you know, I talk about this all the time with, you know, my other former pro friends and we, we had, we're so fortunate. We have so many great friendships from our era because, you know, we had to room together. We had to practice together. You might play them in the next round, but you know, I, I wouldn't trade that for more money because it's just like, you know, 30, 40 years of these friendships is just way, way worth it. Um, yeah. The relationships we build on tour. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had that opportunity. <laughs> Thank you, Fina. Thank you yeah. so much for joining Thank me you, today. Mary. Thank you. I'm honored you asked me. All right. Thank you. We might do it again. All right. Um, we might do yes. it again. <laughs> Guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.